Welcome to a lesson on determining the intervals for which a linear first order differential equation would have unique solutions as well as the interval for which the differential equation would have a unique solution containing an initial value. If we have a first order differential equation in this form here with this initial condition, if p of x and f of x are continuous on an open interval from a to b, then there exists a unique solution for every x in the interval. So it follows that if the interval contains x sub zero from the initial condition, then there exists a unique solution on the interval that satisfies the initial value problem. So a couple things to notice here. This is function p of x. This is function f of x. And x sub zero is the x value from the initial condition. Also notice this does not tell us what the solution is or how to find it. It just tells us if there's a unique solution. Also, y sub zero from the initial condition does not affect the interval, and the interval containing x sub zero is sometimes called the interval of validity. So the main idea is we want to find the interval on which both p of x and f of x are continuous, and this will be the interval for which unique solutions exist. So let's take a look at some examples. We want to find the intervals for which the DE has unique solutions, then state the interval containing the initial condition. The first step is to recognize that we do have a linear first order differential equation. However, it's currently not in the correct form or the form given here below. We want our first term here to be dy dx. So we're going to divide everything by x to begin with. So we'll have the differential equation dy dx plus, I'm going to write this as three divided by x times y, so it fits this form, equals four x. Now we should recognize that p of x is equal to three divided by x, and f of x is equal to four x. Now we'll find where p of x is continuous, find where f of x is continuous, and then find the intersection of those two intervals. Well, for p of x, we know x can't equal zero because we'd have division by zero. So p of x is continuous from negative infinity to zero or from zero to infinity. f of x is continuous for all real values of x. Therefore, we can say that f of x is continuous from negative infinity to positive infinity. So now our main goal is to find the interval for which both of these functions are continuous or the intersection of these two intervals. Well, the intersection of these two intervals would just be the interval for which p of x is continuous or this interval here, which means this is the interval for which the original differential equation would have unique solutions for all values of x in this interval. So that's the first part of the question. And now if we look at the given initial condition, we have y of one equals two, so we want to find the interval containing x equals one, which would be the second interval here. And because it's in this interval, we know that this initial value problem is going to have a unique solution. Remember, these intervals represent x values only. Let's take a look at another example. Same question, different differential equation. So the first step is to put the differential equation in the correct form. So here we're going to divide everything by the quantity x minus three. So p of x is going to be equal to natural log x divided by the quantity x minus three. And f of x is going to be equal to two x divided by the quantity x minus three. Now we'll start by determining where p of x is continuous. Now there are two things to consider here. We know x can't equal three because we'd have division by zero. But the domain for natural log x is when x is greater than zero, or the interval from zero to infinity. So p of x will be continuous on this interval as long as x doesn't equal three. So p of x is continuous on the open interval from zero to three, or from three to infinity. So it's where natural log x is continuous, except we must exclude three. Now looking at f of x, the numerator is a linear function, which is always continuous, 
but notice we would have division by zero when x equals three. So we know x can't equal three if we want f of x to be continuous. So f of x is continuous from negative infinity to three or from three to infinity. Which means the differential equation will have unique solutions on the intersection of these two intervals or when both p of x and f of x are continuous. So comparing these intervals, Notice that the intersection of these two intervals would just be the interval for p of x. We would have to exclude the interval from negative infinity to zero. So we'd have the open interval from zero to three or the open interval from three to infinity. Now going back to our initial condition, we have y of one equals two. So we want to find the interval that contains x equals one, which would be the open interval from zero to three. And because it's in this interval, we know that this initial value problem has a unique solution. Okay, let's take a look at one more. Same question, different differential equation. Notice how this time the differential equation is in the correct form. So we should recognize that p of x is equal to tangent x and f of x is equal to sine x. For p of x, remember tangent theta is equal to y over x on the unit circle. So if we look at the coordinate plane of the unit circle, p of x will be undefined or discontinuous whenever the angle has a terminal side where x equals zero. So x equals zero is actually the y-axis. So when x equals pi over two or three pi over two, p of x will be discontinuous, but it will be continuous in between these two angles. So we could start by saying that p of x is continuous on the open interval from pi over two to three pi over two, but for the same reason why p of x would be discontinuous at these two angles, it's going to be discontinuous at any coterminal angle to these two as well. Notice how these angles are just pi over two plus or minus multiples of pi. So we'd also have to include the interval from three pi over two to five pi over two and so on. There's going to be an infinite number of intervals. Moving to the left, we could also start at negative pi over two and go to pi over two. Again, and so on. So these are the intervals for which p of x would be continuous. For f of x equals sine x, there are no restrictions. X can be any real number. So f of x is continuous from negative infinity to positive infinity. Which means the differential equation is going to have unique solutions on the intersection of these two intervals, which would just be the interval where p of x is continuous. So I'm going to go ahead and state this as the intervals where p of x is continuous. And then looking at our initial condition, we have y of pi equals zero. So we want to find the interval that contains x equals pi, which would be this interval here. And because it's in this interval, we know this initial value problem has a unique solution. And I'll go ahead and write the interval down here. It's pi over two to three pi over two and this is an open interval. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.